Welcome back to the shop, everybody. If this is your first time here, I have a really small shop. It's actually just a one car garage and I'm going to be making a shop tour video in the next couple weeks. So if you want to see the ins and outs and how I get stuff done in this little space, please hit that subscribe button and stick around. All right, folks, welcome back to the channel. I've got something pretty fun for you today. We're taking a quick break from the shadow box stuff and we're making a toy box. Now, this isn't completely off topic. You'll see we still break out the scroll saw and we still put a little bit of art, some dinosaurs, some lettering on it. So stick around till the end of the video to see that. We are going to start with a combination of the track saw and the table saw, break down this sheet of plywood that the toy box is going to be made out of. Now, this is just regular AC sanded on one side plywood that you can get at a big box store or your local lumber dealer. Should be accessible to most everybody. My goal with this video is to create something, a step-by-step -step guide so that if you like this toy box, you can do this too. As always, if it gains some popularity, I will make plans available. Just let me know what you think. So without any further ado, let's jump into it. The first step in this project is to break down this big sheet of plywood I bought. This is three quarter inch plywood and it's just the stuff that's sanded on one side. It's going to be painted so I'm not super worried about the way it looks. I typically break down plywood with my track saw and a piece of foam underneath so I don't cut my work surface. You could do this outside with a skill saw and a straight edge or pretty much whatever you have available. I'm going to take it to the table saw next and that's where I'm going to bring everything to width. This is where I can be a little more accurate. So again, when I break down this piece of plywood, I'm not really going for accuracy, I'm just going for rough dimensions. Here's where I start to bring everything to final dimension. This is where a miter saw can come in really handy. If you don't have one of those, go ahead and make yourself a crosscut sled and just head on back to the table saw. I made do with one of those for years and honestly, sometimes I still break it out because it is so accurate. All right, so I've got all our panels cut to length. Again, three quarter inch plywood. And I just set up my dado blade because I actually am gonna do, I'm trying to strengthen this thing up. So I'm gonna do a half lap situation on the frame and I'm gonna rip these dados on three sides, uh, inch and a half on three sides and then a quarter inch on the top. I just wanna show you that that's part of the process but don't overthink it just yet. You'll see kind of where that comes into play. All right, so I was able to, wait, did you see that? Did I miss it? So all my panels have a full dado. I think I only showed you the ripping one little section, but yeah, I had to do that a few times to get my inch and a half width there. I've dadoed all those out. And now we're gonna move on to the one by four. There is gonna be a detail on the, on the top of these panels for the lid. I just, I'm not entirely sure what I wanna do there yet. Like I mentioned, I'm kind of planning this thing on my head. The, you know, the, 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 the plans will be a lot better. It won't just be like, all right, plan this in your head and make it. And I'll get to those once I figure this out. This is my one by four clear pine stock, eight foot. This is what's gonna make up the leg sections and the top and bottom rails. So I need to cut the legs. I've got two, four sets of two, which I'm going to cut the length and then miter and glue together. So it's kind of an angle piece like that. I need to cut all of this one by four to length for my leg. We'll do that over on the miter saw and then the legs are gonna drop into this dado that I just showed you. So again, we'll run them through the dado stack, exact same width and depth, and you'll see how that detail comes together. So yeah, let's head over to the miter saw.
I'm gonna glue up these legs now that I've got the dado installed. I ripped that 45 degree angle, so it's time to glue the two pieces together um, and make a leg. I'm gonna show you one of my favorite techniques here, which you've probably seen, but this is how I like to do this kind of thing. So there's your miter, boom, onto the tape. There's your miter, right? These two are gonna go together. So I'm gonna sneak in here, flush it up. Boom. Right, and then when those two come together, that tape is gonna be our clamping pressure, and that's really all you need. Nice, tight miter. Lay some glue in there. Use my other two strips to fasten them together. All right, there's my clamp in the other direction. Not too much pressure, you don't wanna separate that miter, but just like that. See that? So, that's a leg, right? No end grain showing, I mean, besides this, which is gonna drop into our dado, so. A few more of those, we'll have some legs. Sweet, so I just took the tape off. These miters came out really nice. I let these things sit overnight, if we can get a shot of this. But I mean, look how tight. I don't know if I'm just getting good at it. It's just dumb luck, but I mean, these things are just spot on. There's no gap whatsoever. And I end up leaving that little bead glue. But because this is pine and it's pretty fragile, of course, I'm being very careful not to dent any of it, but I'm actually gonna bring this over to the little router and just hit it with a chamfer, just a tiny little chamfer so we don't end up uh, breaking any of that grain out. You could use a round over. Honestly, you could probably just break the edges uh, with a piece of sandpaper um, just to clean them up, but I, I just like the chamfered look. So I'm gonna buzz all these through the chamfer. We're gonna go downstairs and grab our panels, which I, I painted last night. This is the step you either wanna paint, put your finish on, put your stain on. Um, well, everything's all apart because the legs and the panels are gonna be two different colors. Now, if you're making them all the same color, it doesn't really matter, but in my case, panels are gonna be white. This pine is just gonna get a coat of clear poly, so we wanna do the two separate. So we don't get any white paint on our pretty legs. But anyway, off to the router. We'll route those up, and then I think we're gonna glue some of the panels into this, and then we can make our cross members in our top section with our lid. We got a lot to do this morning. <laughs> Let's get after it. Routers first. Alright, so this is our Hopefully this angle works. This is our panel. We've got our legs here. These guys are gonna drop into, okay, right? We got our rabbits or our dados. Those are gonna match up, flush on top, and it's gonna look something like that. This is gonna be easier to show you once I've finished here, but I think the, way, the best way to glue this up is we're gonna glue it and screw it. So legs down first. Nice, those are pretty. And then we'll drop this thing down on top. So this is the inside of the box, right? And as long as this is flush on the top, we're in really good shape. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna lay a line of glue in, and then I'm gonna come back in with three screws, three quarter inches. I'm gonna pre-drill them so I make sure not to crack any of this pine. And I'm gonna do this big side, the second big side, and then I think it'll be easier to, uh, to flip the whole thing over and drop in the end pieces there. So um, one thing I'll do is I'm just gonna mark this right here with a pencil so I know not to go past that line with my glue. Nice, I like it. So we've got a quarter inch reveal there. Probably goes without saying, but we're obviously gonna need a piece in here, which we're gonna make once I've got the whole box put together because it's gonna house a rabbit that's then going to uh, accept our bottom of the box. 
So anyway, that's gonna stand up like that. I'll make another one of those, and then we will put the sides on, and it'll look, well, a lot more like a toy box than when we started, which is good. All right, so that kind of looks like a toy box, right? Still needs a bottom and it still needs some trim and whatnot up here, but yeah, pretty happy with it. Remember this guy? I've made those parts and honestly, all I did was rip more dado so I didn't film it, but essentially this is the part. Um, I've made one obviously for this side, both the front and the back and the other side, and it's got an inch and a half dado, just identical to this, identical to what we did with the legs. Um, which is gonna accept that data so that matches up nice. And I put my chamfer on there just like I did my other pieces. And I actually ripped a quarter inch data on the very bottom of it that's gonna accept um, our bottom plate. So, you know, the bottom of the toy box. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to install all these guys. Same exact way I did with this. Um, screws on the inside, pilot holes, and some glue. And I, I like the, you know, I end up doing that chamfer on both sides because I just feel like it gets rid of, if you had any kind of gap right there, it kind of disappears with that small relief. So there's those bad boys. And then we're gonna move on to this top section. We're gonna basically make a big picture frame that sits on top of here and acts as our rim or whatever that is, that top section. And that's where we're gonna install the hinges for our lid. So let's install these and we'll move on and cut some trim pieces for this top. I'll, uh, I think I got something up my sleeve here. I haven't quite designed it. Yeah, more of the same, more big miters. All right, so as you can see, I've basically, I did a mini version of what we did with the legs. Inch and a half pieces with a 45. Did my old tape trick again. And basically, these are drying right now, but they're going to right on top of there. So it's gonna cover up our edge grain for our plywood. And it's also going to cover up all this business we have here. And I guess the third thing it's gonna do is be a good spot for our lid to drop down on there. So I'm actually just gonna let these dry. I'm going to put my chamfer so everything matches on all these outside edges. And then I'll cut them to length on my miter saw probably use tape again and just tape tape it all in here, kind of like a big picture frame. That'll make more sense once you see it, but that's the idea. And then at this point, you know, once that's done, we won't be able to see any of this ply and any of this end grain from the pine. The look is gonna be really sharp, so that's what we'll do next. What'd you say? I'm gonna get back. Okay, cool. Sweet, so that needs a sand still, but <clears throat> before I do that, I think I'd like to move on to this bottom. I think we should throw that in before, because the last thing we have to do is the top, which shouldn't be too crazy, but it's just gonna be easier to install our bottom plate without it on there and the hinges and all that stuff. Take a look at this, this is pretty slick. So in my head, I was assuming, I was hoping, <laughs> I want that bottom plate to sit on this lip, which it's going to, it's not a big deal, but I wanted it to just be square. I still have these, I guess I should have cut 
I still have a chunk of wood here. So just based on what this leg detail looks like, I might have to cut some small corner pieces out. Not a huge deal, really. I mean, in theory, we could cut a rectangle, you know, 14-ish by 14 by 33, drop that in there and just do a little trimming if we have to around these legs. But I, I doubt it, because I cut that quarter inch rabbit, so it should just accept it okay. I'm gonna run over and just cut that. It's already the length, so it's 14 by 33. So I'll just chop that, drop it in. All right, so here's the bottom. Like I said, I, I cut it to width and length, and I ended up just taking a quarter inch off of each of these corners, you know, a quarter inch by two, because if you look, when I drop that in, it's nice and square. It goes around these little pieces of meat that I guess I should have taken off. Maybe you guys can do that. I mean, this isn't very hard. It took me two seconds. Let's, uh, let's glue and nail that in there, and then uh, we'll work on the top. All right, so I actually just off camera cut out the lid for this, piece of plywood for the lid, and it's exactly the same stuff as we used for these white panels, except for I cut it, these are three quarters, I cut it an inch and a half short in either direction. This is gonna be the edge banding. I'm gonna put this extra material on the outside of that piece of plywood as an edge banding. So this is kinda gonna be our lid detail, right? That's gonna flop up like that. Um, so that'll look nice and that'll look like the pine from the outside, and then the inside is gonna be that white panel which you really won't see, but it's gonna look sharp. Well, that's drying, I'm gonna hit that with a coat of paint, but in the meantime, I wanna install my hinges. So the way I like to do hinges is basically lay them in here, get a flat edge, line them up with the back, and trace them with a pencil. Nothing crazy here, I'm just gonna trace it out, and then I'll flip it over, and I'll actually trace out where that hinge itself, where that bar is gonna land, because I want that to be housed in this skirt as well. Now, I'm just gonna take these out with a chisel. Pine, as long as you've got a nice sharp chisel, it's really kind of satisfying to uh, carve that out. You could get fancy with a router if you wanted to, but in my case, I've always just had pretty good luck with the chisels. That should house our hinge pretty nicely. Sweet. So my lid's done. All I did was, I mean, you saw I taped it up. The reason I had the yellow tape on there is so I could just sand it real quick without scuffing that white paint. So tape comes off, the lid's done. I wanna show you a trick because let's zoom in on these hinges because these hinges, remember we chiseled out a little mortise for them. So when that sits on there, everything will sit flush. But that baby sits right in there nice and flush. The way this works is the, the, you know, this bottom part is attached to the box itself and this little section here in the middle is attached to the lid. And then, right, boom, that's how it opens. These holes are gonna be easy to find and register, right? We can put our center punch in there. We can find out where those screws go really easily. But then how do we, how do we attach it to the top? We don't, we can't just like stick this sort of here, right, cause it'll fall. We don't have any extra hands and we really want it to be like perfectly square to the box, the lid anyway. So one thing I like to do is I'll drop these hinges in there. I won't screw them down or anything and I'm just gonna run a little piece of double-sided tape across each one of those. Then I'm gonna place my lid on there, boom. The double-sided tape will make the hinge stick to the lid. I'll take the lid off, I'll install those screws and then I can pretty easily install the screws in the toy box itself. So if that doesn't make sense, check this out. That's just an easy way to do that because now I can flip it over. I've pre-drilled these holes. Whoops, now you can't see me, but you know, these ones are gonna be a lot easier to do because I can just kind of hold this right here, screw them in. Lucy?
Okay, now is where you get to be like, oh, I see how this relates to what you usually do. Shadowbox scroll saw business. Now we're gonna cut out some decorations for the front. There's a couple things they want. His name, the kiddo's name, and then four dinosaurs. Four different kinds of dinosaurs. As always, when making shadow boxes, we use natural wood. We're gonna do the same for this. We're gonna pick out some really cool stuff and we're gonna cut it out on the scroll saw. This is what I'm excited for. These are great, these are cool little guys. I just threw some finish on them after I cut them out. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna stick it all on there, kind of figure out what I wanna do for spacing because I'm not completely sure just yet where all these little guys are gonna go, how it's gonna look. So yeah, maybe these guys can kinda, I don't know. We're just gonna play around with these. We don't have, you know, there's not like a set template or theme. So it'd be kinda fun if these dudes were just walking like this. <laughs> I love these little guys. I made their little eyes so they look kinda happy. I think I might like that more. Yeah, I think I like it in the middle. That's cute. As I do with my shadow boxes, because it's a trusted adhesive, we're actually just gonna glue these on with some Starbond Medium Super Glue. Code SAM10 for 10% off. Don't forget, people, now. One thing I do want is I want this name completely centered. I should know these dimensions, but 11, 27 half, 27, 13 and a half. What I'll do is this, throw a little tape down to center these guys. That's awesome, so we'll let that dry and then, and then we'll do the big reveal. Very, very excited about how this came out. All right guys, that's it for this one. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this build. It was a fun one for me. I really like the dinosaurs and uh, we are actually heading out to deliver this to a one-year-old's first birthday party. So probably gonna be pretty wild. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Tell me if you like it or not. I'm pretty pumped with how it came out. Thanks again for sticking around. We'll see you next time. Bye.